All right, so here's a quick update of how the plants did in the garden over this last uh, freeze that took place a week ago. Um, I just have this trash can here to show you basically what I did. We were, for 85 hours, we were below freezing, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. And uh, I had the Japanese Aurelia with the trash can also on top. And this is the best it's ever done. So I really uh, like this method. I don't know why I didn't do it earlier. But obviously there's some cold damage. I couldn't stick the whole thing under, but overall I think it really did pretty good. Usually I'll lose about half the plant, but I think I lost probably a couple of leaves maybe. But overall it did pretty good. And then I have here a, a new one, a Pelosporum that I bought. And I didn't want to risk it, so I did the same thing. And uh, I think it did pretty good. Remember it's 85 hours below freezing and it didn't die and these are pretty cold sensitive. So I'm quite proud of the trash can method. It worked, especially for these not so small plants. This one, more wide than anything. But I'm definitely gonna use it again if I have to. So that's how they ended up looking. I'm quite proud of them. Over here, I don't think I was so lucky. This is where I have the Alocasia odora. Uh, giant elephant ear. And obviously you can see that it got pretty damaged. I'm just gonna leave it there, but I'm pretty sure it's a goner. Last time this happened to one of mine, about three years ago, I didn't come back. But this time I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm gonna ignore it and we'll see. Here's the Nightlight Camus Zippers. This is brand new. I bought it at the end of, uh, basically in the fall. And I didn't worry about it. I didn't even cover it up. It only got to about 12 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, if it would have been a new, uh, another species that is not cold tolerant, I would have, you know, put something over it. But I mean, this is down to zone five. And now with the new zoning, we're considered zone eight B here. In, uh, the DFW area, Northeast Texas. And here I have a Podocarpus. I did cover this one. It's also new, new to me. Um, but it, it, I think it did okay. It got a little bit damaged, but I did cover it up with a, with a container here. And uh, I think it did okay. I don't see any real, real um, damage on it other than probably here on the tips a little bit. But that might be, uh, it looks like it might be insect related. But anyway, that's a photocarpus, it did pretty good. There's a container that I covered it with. I, you know, obviously put it upside down and put a, a rock on top of it to prevent it from moving. You know, there's one thing I like about spring is, you know, there's signs of it, even though we're still in the winter, but you can see here the daffodils are starting to peek out. I highly recommend y'all should buy daffodils. The bulbs are pretty hardy. I don't ever water them in the summer and you know, they just come back every year and real nice. They put on a show for sure. Um, I heard tulips are pretty uh, delicate, but daffodils don't care. And uh, you can see they're starting to come up all over. There's some right there. There's some right there. You know, they're starting to show. And even if it freezes again, they don't really mind. Here I transplanted, I transplanted a Sunshine Ligustrum. And it got, you know, it got pretty beat up with the cold. But it's going to be okay. Obviously, you can see some green in there. And it was in the front yard. I transplanted it back here to try to give it more space. And it should be okay. There's more signs of spring. Here's a Budleia, a butterfly bush. And I'm surprised that it's, maybe I should not have covered it because it's still awake. And we're almost gonna go through the whole, through the whole winter. Unless we get another real cold snap, this is gonna make it without going dormant, which is interesting. 
Here's another. Here's a new addition to the garden. It's supposed to be um, super heat tolerant, salvia gregii. But um, I hope that that it does okay. There's a lot of um, dry limbs. But you could also see new growth, and you know it's going over the winter, so I know it loses some some leaves. But I hope you know. Cross my fingers. I'm trying to make this into more of a dry garden. You can tell I put an American agave here. And this juniper youngstun is amazing. And the real the colder it gets, the more red it gets. So highly recommend this plant, especially here in Northeast Texas. Um, it is prickly. It's conifer, it's a juniper family, but it's great. It um, you could almost use it as ground cover. And there's a blue point juniper. Also has some yellowing, but it's doing okay. And then there's a new one that I bought. This is a willow tree. We'll see how this does this year. I bought it in the in the fall. Bubba Desert Willow. But if you've seen the videos here in a while, I um, it used to be like a conifer corner. But in reality, all the conifers that were here basically almost died except for the junipers. Northeast Texas junipers are amazing. Everything else is a little bit finicky. I've had arborvitae that died. I've had um, spruce they died. I mean, but these um, junipers are just good trees. This is another new addition. This is a Carolina sapphire, also a conifer, but it is more, you know, a southwestern conifer from my understanding is they actually tolerate water really well so I didn't bring it in for the winter or not like that it stayed out here for the coldest that we've experienced which was about 12 degrees Fahrenheit and then here's rosemary that I need a I need a change in container but I've had it for about six maybe seven years and they're doing okay a gardenia I had it in a shed but Obviously, it's doing well. And then these are two gardenias that I actually propagated from the mother here with a pretty easy method. I have a video about it somewhere. But these are really, really nice looking. The flowers are amazing. They're white, super fragrant. These uh, boxwood that I got, I really don't like. I got them on sale at Lowe's. And I'm, without lying, these are about five years old, maybe five or six years, and they haven't grown much. I really haven't pruned them. Uh, in the winter, they lose almost all their color. They almost look dead. And uh, I'm not 100% sure what type of boxwood it is, but I wouldn't recommend it because I have some in the front yard that stay green 100% of the year and are way more hardy. They grow a lot faster. So... I was concerned about the lower pedalum. I didn't know if it was gonna take the frost. I didn't cover it. I didn't put a sheet or anything over it. It did get some damage, but overall I think it's okay. But uh, we will see. Um, we'll see how it does. And then obviously the fig tree here. I'm gonna have to give it a little trim because they go a little bit crazy if you don't control them. But last year it was probably about half of the size so it's they're pretty vigorous here's a juniper that was given to me at this size basically so i've had to trim it a couple times already i've had it for about a year but obviously like i said it's a juniper it's super hardy super hardy for the cold handles the heat really well so once again, if you're in the zone 8B now, DFW area, Northeast Texas, junipers are good conifers. They're not soft to the touch, but you know, I'm always experimenting with new trees. And uh, that's basically why I got that cameo thippers over there, night light. I wanna see, I wanna get conifers that I can touch without hurting me. But that's what I got so far.